people used to ask me all the time, um, can you play with all these different people? Some of the records are jazz records and they're played just only on jazz albums and jazz radio stations. Some are played on uh, commercial stations, pop stations, quiet storm stations. Um, let me just tell you the truth. I want as many people to hear my music as possible. Um, yet, there's no compromise to the story. And I want to emphasize this. Uh, there's storytelling in everything I do. So as I spoke before, the first eight bars was a combination of showing that there's multiple meters in different things. And then I had two players. I had George Brooks, who plays with Zakir Hussain and some of the greatest players in the world. The most soulful Bay Area guys, but who's played with great people, including Yellow Jackets and Mark Russo, played on that particular song. Um, let me just name some of the people. Um, uh, Design Claiborne, Peter Fuji, um, Steve Carter. Uh, there's just wonderful Bay Area players that have played on that particular record. What did I do? Let me just tell you what happens. Sometimes in the music business, you have to be proactive. Um, I didn't have a record deal. I had Herbie Hancock's original piano from the, from the uh, Automat that David Rubinson, look him up, sold me for X amount of dollars and I had Herbie's panel in my studio. And you see the studio back here? You see the board? And I was producing records, playing with people, doing things. Ran out of money. Sold the piano. Sold the piano so that I could have enough money to keep paying for food and for everything else so I could do this one record. Mama Blue Shoes. And I did this record years ago. Uh, and um, the two things that I think are important for me to tell you. Never do a record that seems dated. What I mean by that? Uh, Use sounds that are universal, that never sound like they come from a specific era. They could be from any era. Do things that have such heart and such integrity that even if they don't believe, or even if they don't like the words, or the music, or the concept of the song, they have to just give you at least kudos for saying, this brother believes in what he's doing. I tell people a lot of times when I teach in universities around the world, um, I'd rather play with a guy who plays guitar with a capo and who plays and digs in and plays and really plays than to play with somebody who can play five billion notes and um, they show me just their virtuosity. I think music is the merger or the marriage between great inspiration and great technique. I have both and I inspire my students and I inspire the people I play with to do both. But to just look at technique, let me give you an example. If, if you were a writer who typed 500 words a minute, I mean manually, manually, be pretty impossible to do. And I had you look outside of a window and I said look outside in this courtyard and I want you to say you see this person over there there's a woman dressed in black her father just died two kids skipping with a balloon a guy walking with an ice cream cone and somebody skipping with a basketball. Now, you're a great typist. 
That means you have great manual ability. Type me what you see. Your technique would never help you. You must be able to interpret what you see through your heart and then your technique is the ability for you to be able to speak. You are a speaker. Music is language. And that's what I do. I'm really proud of the fact that uh, I remember my father used to say to me, Son, I hope you get a job where you never have to use your hands because you have no hands. He didn't mean to be mean, but I just was awkward and awkward and awkward. And it's amazing. But everything I do is with my hands. But my hands were just instruments that transmit what my heart sees. I truly, without sounding maudlin or overly uh, emotional, God has given me a gift. I see things. I see, I don't mean metaphorically, I mean, I see the dilemma of life. I see the perplexities of life. I see the, the, the quest that people have for life. I see the need to dance. I see the need to move. I see the need for people to be express themselves. And so, um, what I've done is taken all of this information from great masters. And let me explain that. I played at first, when I barely began playing my music, I worked with dancers. My wife was a dancer. And I worked with the greatest dance troops of San Francisco. You know, Zach Thompson, Danny Duncan, Joffrey Ballet, um, and on and on and on. I don't say that egotistically. I'm proud. Let me tell you something. I'm proud of what I've done. But it doesn't define me. Because let me tell you something. If something, if what you've done defines you, when you're not doing what you are not doing, then you're nothing. So therefore, no, I'm not defined by what I'm doing. I'm defined by who I am. And that's why I'm a teacher. And that's why I want to come and teach and share with you. Spiritually, emotionally. My whole quest is to have this video and to have this time and to have this music inspire you. For you to invite me to come and, and uh, share the art of living. Just the art of living. I cook. I clean. I cry. I do everything I have to do. And so all the people that I've played with in the past were my heroes. And it was amazing that I had a chance to play with them. I don't think that that will ever happen again. But what I will say is this. He said, life is still moving forward. I believe that musicians are news reporters. They must speak what they see in real time in the life that they live. And they have to transpond and transform what they see and feel and create some sound that the people of their generation can resonate with. And that's what creative music is. Let me go on. Finally, Bira, Babinga, Berber Street, Duel. Mr. Agu, let me say something about Mr. Agu. Mr. Agu is Joe Agu, a great, incredible instrument maker from Nigeria, who came here and who has created an incredible concept for making indigenous instruments and who's asked me to endorse his instruments and I've used them on every album I've ever done and he and his wife and family are dear friends and I want to give him credit and that's why his name is on there. D. Simone, well that's my daughter, Deidre Simone. Uh, what else can I say? 
love her. And I will always love her. And I want to acknowledge her husband, <laughs> Ursi, and, um, and my grandchildren, uh, Nia and Miles. Um, in the hard times and, the, and in the wonderful times, they've been fabulous to me. Well, the gift. What is the gift? Mm. Listen to that song. It's a great ballad. I think it is. I hope you think so too. The gift is whatever you make it. It's whatever you make it. And it's a choice. And I have to encourage you, and it might sound like I'm being kind of preachy here, but I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to. I'm trying to encourage. That's why I come. That's why I go teach. The gift. You have a gift. Everyone has a gift. Everyone has a voice. Everyone has something to say. And you must find an ability or a conduit to speak that gift. And that's what that's about. Batamina. Well, that came from a simple inspiration from a group from Cuba called Los Papines. And if you look them up, we can Google them. They still exist. To what degree, I don't know. But they did things with congas. But they also did things vocally. And they sung everything they could play. That's a slap. Everything I do and everything you hear me do is based upon language and based upon a system of great heart and great inspiration and just great love. And I want you to do the same thing. Stay strong. <laughs>